Well, did you enjoy part one of talking turnouts and track maintenance? I know I did. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, one thing I forgot to mention about the bigger turnouts. Uh, a lot of people have been uh, asking about them and say they, they like them as well. Another, another thing that you can do is you can uh, adjust the wiring on the back. And, which is very clever, they give you a little piece of wire already soldered to the back of the frog that I, uh, you can just drop down through the lath so you don't need to put a feeder on it. And you can change them into a, uh, a dead frog turnout by cutting these two little bits of wire here, the little bridges across the insulated joint, and then you solder another two bridges up here a little bit further between the switch and the stop rail. And that sort of turns it into a, I suppose you call it a microengineering turnout, or I think the Atlas are the same, where the actual frog is dead and the switch rail and the stock rail are permanently live. Uh, but then you still have to, with the Pico, uh, because it actually deadens this whole section, the frog and the rails leading out to the frog, which I forget what they're called, oh, I should remember. Uh, you have to power the frog then if you make this adjustment. So they're a very versatile turnout, and uh, as I said before, they are very good and they are bulletproof. They really are bulletproof. Uh, but if you use them in their standard form, remember, you must keep the uh, gap between the switch and the stock rail clean so you get good electrical conductivity through here. So, right, well I've finished my cup of tea now. So let's go and have a look at, uh, at part two. And, oh, that sounds like someone else, doesn't it? Uh, of talking turnouts and track. So let's hope you enjoy it. part two. Hmm. Okay, so what have we learned so far? Uh, your turnouts need to be level on a flat plane. Uh, if you're having any switching contacts, they need to be kept clean. Uh, what else? Uh, the frog needs to be nice and level. Your gauge on your axle sets needs to be correct. Your check rails need to be in place. Most turnouts, that's not a problem. It's just uh, the tillings with their, their plastic check rail that you need to glue in. Uh, axle sets, that's your main problem. If your turnout's set up correctly, you're going to have problems if your axle sets aren't gauged correctly. Now, moving on ooh, to the dangerous subject of track cleaning. So, these are my opinion, what I do, everyone's got a different idea. So let's get on to the uh, interesting subject of keeping the tracks clean. Whew, it's a bit muggy today, trendsetters. We're into our summer now and uh, getting our storms. It's probably about 85% humidity today. Had a few track buckles in here already, I have to go through and ease a few curves off. That's why I like laying track in summer, because you know how, how uh, expanded it's going to get. Right, track cleaning. We all know what one of these is, a track rubber. Hmm. Let me show you a little experiment that uh, proves to me why I don't use track rubbers and why I've seen people who use them continually have problems. So let's have a look at this. Okay, let's imagine that this piece of uh, ply here is your track surface. And uh, nice and clean there. Now your track has got, uh, you know, it's slightly irregular on the surface. If you've got it under a microscope, it's not going to be dead flat. It's going to have tiny little ridges in it, but, but not too bad. So we get our track rubber and we start cleaning, cleaning. Imagine this is over a turnout. So you've got little square ridges where the frog is and all that sort of crap going on. And over the years, you're cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. You think, oh, that looks very nice and shiny, isn't it? What's all this shit here? Now, I can tell you right now, trendsetters, that that isn't sawdust from the ply. Unless I've rubbed it that hard that I've caught the ply on fire and it's actually ash. But no, it's not. It's the track rubber disintegrating itself. They're basically grit and glue. Now, I can see actual shiny bits there reflecting back. There we go. Now, that's only just one, one little clean. Do you really want that? in your turnouts and on your wheels and all that? No, you don't. So, the best thing you can do with a track rubber is use it for a doorstop, in my opinion. So, I will show you now how I keep track clean. Now, I'll be the first one to admit that there are times when you do need to get slightly aggressive uh, with your track, but if you take a track rubber to your track, you're going to destroy the surface of it. And what will happen is you'll end up with instead of a smooth surface like that, or relatively smooth surface, you'll end up with this uh, surface that's got heaps of minute scratches, deep scratches in it, and those scratches end up holding more dirt than 
what the smooth rail did in the first place. So let me just have a look here. Now, you know, there's a little bit there. I, I can show you sections of track on this layout that you'll two, get two thick black lines and the trains have no trouble going over the top of it. Now that's one of the beauties of DCC. Because the track voltage is AC, you get this positive and negative effect uh, 50 times a second, or depending on what cycle it is, I think it's um, 50 or 60 hertz, whatever it is. And that swapping from AC to DC helps pulse and burn the dirt off. Uh, it's so much, so much better than DC, where DC actually attracts dirt and holds it there, where the AC actually pulses and blows the dirt off. At a lot of our level crossings, or grade crossings as you, uh, the Yanks call them, <laughs> uh, we actually use AC track circuits because it helps uh, in, in areas where there's not a lot of trains, the rails are a little bit rusty, uh, the AC helps pulse and help shunt the track so the, uh, the boom gates will drop and the, the, level, the lights will flash. So in areas where there's not a lot of traffic, uh, you will find most of the track circuits are AC. So there you go. So how do I clean the track? Okay, well, I never attack it with a track rubber. I stopped doing that years ago. Um, some people have had success with like masonite or uh, maybe leather. I used, where was I? Young fellow, my old layout, um, the years underneath my dad's place, was DC obviously, back before DCC was invented. I actually used to use um, leather, the rough side of leather, which was that little, you know, sort of texture -y. And that had just an, enough sort of uh, roughness to help smooth, smooth uh, the track and clean it off a little bit. But what I use is two liquids that are actually made in Australia and uh, I just basically rub the track over every now and then and it may not be the most polished track you'll ever see but as far as conductivity I never have any problems so let's have a look at those. Now the two products I use are actually both made in Australia can you believe that? That's amazing. Uh, this one here Inox it's like your uh, CRC WD40 but it has no uh, silicons in it, no petroleum products, it's safe for plastic and all that sort of thing. The other one here is Lanotech which is, I'm probably leaning a little bit towards. Uh, Lanotech is actually made from wool grease or lanolin, hence the, the name. And it does the same thing, uh, inhibits oxidation, dries out moisture, blah blah blah. Uh, has no, this is completely natural, you could probably drink this stuff, I don't know. But it's basically wool grease. And uh, it was invented in Australia, or not the wool grease. Sheep have got wool grease all over the world. Nah, I know. But uh, it was invented in Australia to liquidise the actual wool grease because it is actually a grease. And they worked out a way to put it in a liquid form. And I find I'm, I'm getting less deposits with the lanolin than I am with the inox. So uh, I'm probably leaning towards I'm the lanolin. But anyway. Um, both no silicons, both perfect for plastic, and both uh, inhibits oxidation, which is the main thing. Right, here we go. I'll show you uh, what I do if I wait for another train. Damn trains. Damn trains. So, let's give it a shake. As you can see, uh, my old track cleaning rags here cop a bit of a hiding. Uh, I'm actually buying an Aztec uh, track cleaning car to do the Helix and other the um, other areas underneath. I really like the Aztec cars because their rollers are on an angle and that's very clever. It doesn't rely on the rollers being dragged along. The rollers actually go along slightly skew to the track so they slightly scrub it as well as turn. So uh, I think that's a really clever idea. And they're not cheap but I, I think they're, they're a, great, a great idea. So just a couple little squirts on there. And uh, now the idea with using a liquid cleaner trend service is not to rub it off. You know, we see people cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and they keep rubbing until the track's dry. Well, you've just undone all your work. You've taken that coating off. You can see, look, look, I have got a dirty track. Look at that. Now, a few people have asked me because these uh, sprays, <laughs> including this one, says non-conductive. Non they're all non-conductive. And people say, well, how can they possibly work if they're non-conductive? Well, they don't actually help the electricity. They don't actually pass the electricity through themselves, transcendence. 
what they do is clean a path for it and get any dirt and crap out the way so the actual conductive parts can do their job. So if you've got dirt between two contacts, this spray or CRC or whatever, all the others, doesn't actually create the path for the electricity. You can imagine spraying, you know, it says you can use this on circuit boards and all that. Well, imagine spraying something conductive on a circuit board. You'd have a really good smoke generator for a little while. So all these sprays are non-conductive. They don't conduct electricity. They clear the path for it, if you know what I mean in terms of service. They also help insulate. That's why you can spray them on uh, distributor caps and stuff like that in your car. Now, if they were conductive and you sprayed it on a distributor cap, you'd be going nowhere. You'd have lots of sparks around the engine, not where you want it. So they clean, they help insulate where they should insulate, and they help clean the path and get rid of all the uh, build-ups and, and oxidation. So, giving that a bit of a rub there. Now, that's slippery. You can't see it, but there's a tiny little wet film. It's not super wet, but if I kept rubbing until that was dry, well, I've just undone all the goodness that this spray does, you know? I should st stop looking at the actual viewfinder and look at the lens, shouldn't I? Never mind. So, you know, I just, uh, I've got a rough idea how much I can rub it now before uh, I take off all the liquid. So that's a little bit, that's nice and smooth, that's what you want. If your track's sticky, uh, it's got oxidation on it. Now I used to use isopropyl alcohol, which was fine for a while. Uh, but then I found that the actual isopropyl itself was building up a little bit of a, um, a barrier. So I've gone away from using that. And uh, I'm having a lot of success with these two sprays. Now, I get a lot of dust in here. The doors open to outside. I'm near a freeway, there's lots of dust. Uh, so it isn't a pristine environment in here, but I never have problems. There's, sectional, there's sections of track on this layout that have never been cleaned, and I never have problems with it. Um, also, the beauty of this, if you've got a section you, want, you can't get to, really soak a rag with it and run a train through, and that'll take some of it into that section that you can't get to. It's a little bit of a problem for traction. If you put too much on, uh, it will inhibit traction a little bit, but it doesn't seem to, unless you go really stupid with it, you know? Now, so that's what I do. Leave a film on there. A little bit on the rag or on whatever applicator or on your rollers, on your track cleaning car. And make sure the track is just a tiny bit, not wet, but you can just feel it, the little coating on the track. And that's how this stuff works. Now, let me show you what you do with turnouts. Now, turnouts are obviously a little bit different to track, but you know, I've seen on many occasions, uh, guys on club layouts get there and they grind away like this. A train will go across a turnout and stall or hesitate and they'll get the old track rubber out and they'll grind away. And as we saw earlier, you can imagine all the crap that's going in here and further up, up at the switch. So no, don't do that. Get rid of that. If you need to clean, if the track gets, you know, that bad, you can't remove it with a rag with some liquid on it. Get yourself one of these trendsetters. These are called a burnishing pen, or a fiberglass pen, or an abrasive pen. They're not really abrasive, they're more polishing. They're made for the electronics industry. And the tip here is actually glass fibers, and you wind it in and out. It's like a biro. There we go, look, ooh, look it's, it's getting rather happy, isn't it? There we go, and it's back, it's cold, and it's hot. Okay, so. These are basically glass fibers. It's very, very smooth. And they use them in the electronic industry for polishing circuit boards where you, maybe they don't want to use flux to solder or something like that. And they work really well. I actually bought it for um, uh, doing the sides of the rails here. If you're going to solder, and you can't see, but that just polishes that up. You might even be actually be able to see that there. A really nice mirrored surface there. So, what you can do is you use it for cleaning your turnouts. So you can run it through just like that. You hardly have to put any pressure on it at all. It's very, very gentle. And you can do all your switch rails there and your stock rails. 
and even you know if it's if the tracks are ballast, you're not going to do you're not going to upset the ballast, and you can do your switch rails, and it's all lovely. So instead of attacking with the track railer, get yourself a burnishing pen, and you can buy uh, glass refills, gla the uh, glass fibre, and then if you want to clean it. If it gets dirty, you get a rag, put some um, alcohol or something on it, and you can just dab it into the rag, and it'll wick with the dirt, will wick down and um, come straight out of it. Now, on turnouts like the Picos and that, where you're relying on this uh, electrical connection in here, just get a uh, cotton tip and just run it up and down in between the switch and the stock rail there. Always go that way. Go like you're trailing through the points on the last movement if you try and push it through that way uh, you'll actually tear some off and you actually end up with a problem rather than uh, alleviating one and once again your uh, anti-corrosive you can see a little bit of dirt on there your anti-corrosive uh, properties if you leave a coating in there will help will stop corrosion and a high resistance joint between those two points there No more stalling on turnouts, trendsetters, because it drives me nuts. Yeah. Well, Trentez, I hope that gives you something to think about. That's how I look after my rails here anyway, and it uh, seems to work for me. But uh, I think the best thing you can do is throw out your track rubbers, that's my opinion. And I know sometimes you have to be slightly aggressive with track, but, but nowhere near that much. You don't need to put more crap on there than you're trying to take off. The biggest thing is keeping the coating on your rails, a slight coating on your rails, so they don't have a chance to oxidise. And uh, I think that goes a long way to help. Different things will work in different environments, of course, but you know that's, that's how I do it. So. Anyway, that'll do for now, and uh, we'll catch you on the next update before Christmas. Okay, that's all for now. Hooroo! It's exciting, isn't it? Where's the Fred? There's no Fred. Hey, Fred! Hey, Tom, you got out of dynamics, boys. Ah, there you go. It's not great crossing really, it's